I have absolutely no intention in this video to sugarcoat anything. I've had way too many one-to-one -one consultations with entrepreneurs and businesses who are simply failing at the moment. And I've seen firsthand what it can do to your mental health, to your external relationships, the pressure it can put on you in life. Just having a business that you can't get off the ground or a business idea or a business venture, or sometimes you can't even motivate yourself to do what you know you need to be doing in order to push your business to the next level. So in this video, I really want to break down some of the common things that I've seen. And I've at this stage, I've worked with hundreds of entrepreneurs and businesses, and I've seen so many people uh, stress about their business not currently being where it should be. And obviously myself, I've been an entrepreneur my entire adult life and way before I had like, you know, success. So before like my first $10,000 month online or before uh, I had four or five figure contracts and before I understood the art of converting people into clients and customers, I was struggling as well. Like it took a while for me to understand some of the principles and go from a struggling entrepreneur to an entrepreneur who actually can build a career and a life for oneself. So I was running an offline business before I ever came online. Obviously there were online elements like creating a website and uh, I, I had like video ads that I was working on and, and so on and so forth. Um, but fundamentally I was running an offline business and I was about 17 at the time when I started. So I knew nothing about business. I didn't have much work experience at all. And I was failing in so many different ways in my business. And I just, I didn't understand the principles at that time. I had no coach. I had, you know, no one to really guide me through the process. But when I first experienced success, it was when I left that business to one side and I started online. So I did a little bit of reflective work recently and I was thinking about what were some of the things I did differently in my online business that could have helped me out in my offline business um, and you know what did I do differently to start experiencing some success and I thought that would be a really great video for some of you and I think the first thing that I did differently was really look into my skill set so I was talented with using the internet you know I knew how to create websites I knew how to to, to run advertisements online. And that's one of the things that I always say as well is to make sure you're starting a business in an area that you have interest in, you have knowledge in, you have experience in, because that's always going to make it a lot more enjoyable for you in the long run than if you're just starting a business because you think it is a business that will make you a lot of money. You can obviously do that eventually, like once you've built some success in one area, you can go off and run other businesses and invest in, in other places and so on and so forth. But especially for those of you who are struggling at the moment, the business is not you know, where you want it to be, it's not funding your lifestyle at the moment, then think about what you're passionate about. Because on the days when it is a real struggle, it might be your passion that's the only thing you have keeping and pushing you forward. The second thing that I did differently, so those of you who know my journey, my first online business was e-commerce. So I was selling products online and one thing I did in that business was do some research into what products were in demand. I spent so much time researching. I spent way more time researching than I did anything else in that, in that business. And it was um, a, a, my first successful venture. And whenever I sit down with entrepreneurs who are not doing so well in their business, um, I always ask them, you know, what's the demand for your product or what's the demand for your service? And those who know what their demand is, know what their demand is in their niche or for that particular service or product they're trying to sell, they are usually the ones who excel, who do extremely well eventually. And those who have no clue are usually, I hate to say it, but I said I was gonna be brash in this video, but those tend to be the entrepreneurs who are the lazy ones. They don't want to do the background work. They just want the product or the service out there. They want people to buy it and then they want to make loads of money. It's just not realistic. You have to do your research before you even start the business. You know, are there any Facebook groups? Are there any uh, YouTube? Are there any YouTube channels? You know, is there demand for your particular business? Is there a niche? Is there an audience for it before you start investing loads of money and loads of time into it? And then once I did that, I started looking at the competition. So this was way before I even invested in any product online. I researched the demand for that product and then I researched who was selling it. The direct competitors, were there any people selling directly the product I wanted to, to sell? 
and were there any indirect competitors, so people who were offering a different solution to my product or my service. So these were the things I did before I even invested any time or money starting that business, before I built a website, before I, uh, you know, uh, stocked any products. Before I did any of that, I stopped and th thought about, is there a demand and what are the competitors like? And if there were competitors that I felt like were doing well, can I emulate anything from their success? Are they doing Facebook ads? What do those Facebook ads look like? Do they have an email list? How are they getting people on those email lists? All of the things that I've spoken about on this YouTube channel for years were things that I started to naturally think about when I started my online business that propelled me in ways that I hadn't been propelled before in business because I simply were taking these things for granted. So one thing I want you to do in this video is to take accountability. Um, that's one of my keywords this year is accountability for your business. And if you are currently struggling in your business and your business is not funding your lifestyle, you know, your business is not at the place where it needs to be in order for you to be a full-time entrepreneur, I want you to write down the major reasons, at least three major reasons why you believe your business is where it is at the moment. And all of these reasons, I want you to focus on things that are within your control. So if it's the fact that, you know, you're not putting it in, in enough time or you haven't done your research or, you know, maybe you haven't researched some of your competitors, I want you to list the things that are within your control to change because some things are not within our control. So don't write down, oh, I have a child. Because, yeah, people have children and they still are able to run successful businesses. And that's not something that you can control. You can't control the fact that you have a child already. So list down the things you know you can control. Write them down if you want to be accountable to us here on this YouTube channel and along your business journey as well. Leave some of those reasons in the comments section down below as well. I want to see how many of you have kind of similar uh, things that you feel like you need to improve on but then after you write that down I want you to also next to it write down some actionable steps that you can take to ensure that that thing holding you back will not hold you back any longer and I did something very similar as well when I started my first e-commerce business um, and I was transitioning one of the things that was holding me back is that I wasn't putting my product or service in a place that was visible for people to see. But obviously in my e-commerce business, I put my products in all of the places where I felt like people could see it and the opportunity for them to buy it. And even acknowledging that that was one of my mistakes, that that was one of the things that was drawing me back, when I changed that, you know, literally within a few weeks, I was going to the post office twice a day with bags full of products that I had sold. Um, and this was literally, you know, a shift in mindset and a shift in direction and energy allowed me to go from, you know, not doing well in business to, like I said, going to the post office twice a day with bags full of products that I was sending out to my customers to the point where uh, the staff at the post office knew my name um, and they would allow me to, to take home some packaging labels so I can label my own packaging to make their job a little bit easier because I was coming in with so many parcels every single day that it was becoming a stress for some of the workers because it was a lot of, a lot of load so they started to help me to you know label my packages at home so that I can bring it to them and it's all labeled it's all done and literally by writing down some of my mistakes and where I was going wrong in business and being able to really meditate on practical things that I can start doing and implementing to counteract some of those mistakes and you know, counteract some of the things that have been holding me back in business, I was able to then make a full you know, 180 turn and start experiencing success within my business. And I think a turning point for me as well when I realized how far I've come was working with DH Gate. And I want to share this story because some of you might be in a similar position that I was in at the time as well. Like my first online business, e-commerce, DHgate was the very first website that I ever invested in. It was the very first platform that I ever used to buy products. And it was, as a result, a part of my success story. It was the very first business that took off for me. And I'm not saying that because this video is sponsored by DHgate. It's actually not. Um, but this year, I have actually been able to work with DHgate. Towards the end of last year and early this year, I was working with DHgate on projects. We have a Udemy course together on marketing. 
And for me, it was like full circle. That was the first company that I invested in where my business was actually successful. And now rather than me just going on a web, random website called DHgate and making a purchase as a random customer, they actually know who I am. And we're actually, we've collaborated together, which is incredible. So when you start writing down some of your mistakes and taking accountability for it, you'll be surprised with how much that can actually practically change your business, your situation, um, and things can actually start, you know, you can start working on the bad things rather than trying to, you know, push them far back somewhere in, in your brain so that you don't have to deal with it. Um, but when we acknowledge where we're going wrong, then we can take measured steps to correcting that. Um, as always, even though I'm not going in depth anymore in terms of like marketing, there are hundreds of videos on this channel about marketing and, you know, things you can do to help push your business forward. I still have the formula available. It's the free guide to generating leads and sales online. So I'll leave links to it in the description down below. If you have not read it yet uh, and you want help in terms of boosting your business, make sure you go and uh, read that because it will help you to understand how marketing online works and how you can use it to your advantage to grow your business. But I do really hope that this video brought you value. I am trying my best to cater to the topics that you suggest to me. Um, some of you left me suggestions when I posted my last video. So I'm going to put it out there again. If there is anything specifically you want me to talk about in future upcoming YouTube videos, do let me know in the comment section down below. But until next time, guys, have a great day and I'll see you soon.